boring evening update time. Um, that's the fuel tank. I've been going over it with the grinder with the sanding wheel on it. They, it really is incredibly solid. Uh, pretty happy with that. So I'm going to degrease it in a minute and then start going over with the Hydrate 80. I do have the Deox gel as well, but that always means washing it off with water, which seems a bit counterproductive. So I'm just going to put loads of this on, particularly at the seams. And then tomorrow it should be right for epoxy. I have decanted my Hydrate 80 into a mug or a cup thing because um, it's oxygen sensitive so if you leave it out for a while it just screws up what's left in the bottle. Um, I've, that's the tank upside down and I'm just painting the rusty bits because this stuff's quite expensive. So I've done the flanges and the return. The whole of the underside is rust free. I think it's just years of having engine oil and grease dripped all over it but that's good. So. Um, I'm going to get some axle stands or a box or something, flip it upside down and then I can do the top side. Ta-da! Found a bin to put it on. So I've got a nice working height as well. But you can see how under what looked like surface rust, it's really good metal. So I'm chuffed with that, especially the filler neck, because that's always a weak point. So yeah, just going to do the best I can to keep it protected. Well, while that's doing its stuff, I've been turning my attention to other random brackets because once I get the engine bay painted, it's going to be uh, my evening jobs to put it all back together again. Uh, that's the battery tray, uh, well, it's not a reinforcer. That's what the battery sits on in the near side front, which normal Rover or the petrol cars don't have. So I've just been cleaning that up. Um, I'm going to do as many brackets as I can and then tomorrow or whenever it is I put the epoxy, the black epoxy on that, I can do these as well. I'm actually outside during daylight, uh, which is nice. The sun's not quite gone down yet, it's not quite at 5.30 but I've nipped out a bit early because I want to do some painting on the underside of this before it gets too cold. Um, that is a spare wheel and tyre that I have off my drift car. They're, um, well, they're commotives, I think. I've basically got five of these. Um, three have got good tyres, so I'll need to find a fourth. But I'm just looking to see if they will fit standard arches. Because uh, they're off my drift car, which has the wide arches, but they actually look pretty good like that. So I think I'll try and get another tyre. Then um, this can roll on those. We've got the fuel tank inside, ready to epoxy. What I'm going to do is come out here, just clean up the underside of this so that way if I've mixed up too much paint for the fuel tank I can slap it on this as well without wasting it. Right, so very roughly with the um, sanding disc, <coughs> excuse me, just gone over all of the areas that I want to epoxy. The um, that Joton 87 epoxy, although it will go over pretty much anything, doesn't need a primer. What it does want is a good mechanical key. So if you clean something off with a wire brush on a drill, it kind of polishes the surface and that stuff doesn't stick. So those are all the bits I want to do. Um, also cleaned up that bracket, which is for the alternate, oh, sorry, the battery on that side. It gets riveted on in here. So I'm going to go mix up some paint, put it on the top side of the fuel tank, under there and on here. Okay, it's night time again. I have painted a lot of the front of the car. All looking lovely and black. Um, basically did all the bits that I prepped. Made sure I got a good dollop in and around those um, rad brackets <coughs> to preserve them for as long as possible. And then all my lovely welding that I did in here, that's all protected. And through into here as well. So I will. There's going to be a few bits I've missed, so I have to come back and do them. Um, but on in the main, it's good. Nice to have it all treated. I've also made a start on doing the fuel tank, which is looking good. Um, I started to run out of paint at that point and rather than mix them all up I thought I'll finish it off tomorrow so I've just concentrated on the bits that will need to be done um, so I can 
turn it upside down and rest it on something without it leaving black paint marks everywhere. But that, what looked like quite a crappy tank, is actually cleaned up really nicely, so that's good. So I'm going to pack up and head off home now. It's the day after I put that epoxy Joton 87 on the car. Uh, it's gone off, it's gone hard, it's looking really good. There are inevitably a few bits that I missed, so tonight I'm going to finish painting the fuel tank and touch in any of the other bits that I've missed. Um, I might, if I have time, start seam sealing some of those bits as well. And I'm going to have a, a quick rub down of some of the filler I put in a few days ago, just to see how that sands more than anything. Um, in other updates, the two mobile spring, uh, sorry, mobile scuffs and repairs paint guys have got back to me. Uh, one had never seen the car, has now seen it and doesn't want to be involved. The other one who gave me the initial advice said, yeah, he'll come and do it told me where to buy the paint and what sort of um, etch primes and things to buy um, he's now told me he doesn't want to do it either which is really annoying um, but in a way uh, that's kind of good because I've decided to do it myself I know nothing about paint but I've bought myself a cheap paint gun off eBay and as I already had the paint and it's just the engine bay in a you know a car that didn't cost me a great deal um, I thought I'd have a bash at doing it myself, so yeah, that should be quite interesting. So um, stay tuned in further videos for <laughs> whatever ends up happening. While I was out here um, cleaning up bits and pieces that I'd missed yesterday, I used the wire brush to like clean up the front of the engine. So while I've got good access, I've just you know loosely gone over to smarten it up a bit. I still haven't power washed it but I'll leave that for when the car's back together. One of the bits that suddenly struck me that I'd be worth painting was under the front there. That on my police car, which I restored, was completely gone, as in, you know, nothing there. So water can collect in that area, so I've cleaned that off, ready to paint it as well. Just fixed up my next batch of Joton 87. That's actually completely done. Um, so if you if you're interested, that amount, which I think was 60 or 70 quid with the hardener, uh, I'm just looking to see how many litres it was, but um, maybe that's 10 litres? Oh, no, I guess that's 4 litres. Um, yeah, so that whole tub, 70 quid's worth, did the whole of the underside of a Rover SD1, two coats of a complete sill and side of a Rover 800 and um, including fuel tank stuff like that on the other SD1 and then it's going to be enough to do most of the front of the underside of that blue one outside and its fuel tank so not bad when you think about you know what you'd be paying for some of the other epoxies you can get so I've stirred that in I've got to wait 10 minutes for it to go off and I'll paint it on the car All right fuel tank done. I've still actually got quite a lot of paint left in my pot so I'm going to go back to the car and see what else there is to do. Uh, I have actually pretty much painted everything that needed to be black. Uh, everything's done so that drag to that paint I'm just gonna have to throw away which is a bit of a waste but never mind. I've got another massive 70 quids worth of you know paint in a drum so um, yeah, next I'm going to put some seam sealer on some of the seams, particularly that one up in there, same on the other side, and um, maybe another couple of little water traps like behind these inner, ring, inner wings. Right, so I'm using Tiger Seal in a caulking gun rather than the brushable seam sealer because I really want to stuff it into that groove and same on the front side of the wheel wells. It's a lot stiffer to work with, but um, it's, I think, better for this kind of application. Oh, 
I'll come back in a minute and run a brush down it to um, work it smooth. I'm also going to put just a, a bit across some of these other seams where I've welded just in case there are pinholes or the paint hasn't gone right in or something. Um, that one I can see has been nicely done so I won't bother with that. Then up under the front in here I'm going to get it right in the back of there as well because I know that's a favourite rust area for these cars. So that's all in there just in its beaded form. Uh, then I've got a real shitty old, well it's not even old, it's just total toilet quality Chinese paintbrush. Uh, and I'm just going to cut the bristles down with a pair of scissors so it's a bit stiffer. Otherwise it'll string up and go everywhere. Paintbrush has now had a haircut, so the bristles are a lot stiffer. You can dip it in meths or something, well not meths, but you know, panel wipe or acetone or thinners to make it spread a bit easier. But the general idea is just smooth it out and make sure it's well adhered without it going too stringy. You could have used the brushable seam sealer but to really get it into some of these cracks and crannies I prefer to use the stiff stuff. It doesn't have to be too neat because um, it'll all be hidden behind stone chippers anyway. So I'm just going to go around and do that wherever I've shoved it on and then work out what to do next. Right, okay, we are here under the front near side corner. I'm just showing you that up in there I've really wedged a lot in because that is a horrible rain trap and I've made kind of a shoot with the brush so that any water coming in at the top will just go straight out rather than sitting behind that wheel well and rotting it out like it did originally. So I've done that both sides. I'm yet to smooth that side, but um, that's the plan. Right, okay, slight change of plan, and this could be a very, very bad idea, but I've brought my compressor outside and you might have noticed the masking. I am going to attempt to apply my Gravitex stone chip tonight. Um, the reason being that Jotun 87 that I put on last night has all gone off and the other stuff I've just put on is starting to go hard. If you don't go straight over it within sort of 28, uh, sorry, 24 to 48, 48 hours, you need a really good mechanical key, which would mean sanding it all back again. Ideally, I'd be painting it tomorrow, but it's due to rain and get even colder. So I have bit the bullet, bought the compressor outside, done some speed masking. Now I'm gonna go get the gun prepared and um, yeah, shoot some Gravitex stone chip on it and hopefully it'll stay on there. Okay, this is the stuff I'm using. It's called Gravitex, uh, made by U-Pole and it's underbody coating stone chip protector over paintable. It comes in black or I think you can get it in gray or white or some other colors. This stuff is single pack, I guess you'd call it. It's you don't have to add a hardener or anything. You literally just shake the bottles up. Comes with that um, applicator gun. You screw it into the top of the bottle and then off you go. Well, that's the idea. On here, I've also got a um, regulator and a cheap Chinese crappy water trap, but it's better than nothing. I've found with this that playing with the pressure didn't do as much as I'd hoped. And actually I got the desired results by moving the gun closer or further away from whatever it was I was painting. So um, I'm gonna carry on shaking this. The reason these look so scruffy is this is the dregs from when I did the police car about, I don't know, 18 months ago or so. But I have used it since on the Rover 800 I've got and um, it still worked fine. So yeah, I'm gonna shake this up, take it outside, blast it on. Right. I am outside now, that's got a good shaking, it's plugged in, ready to go. Um, that's the sort of texture you get. This is the same stuff I was using on the bulkhead insulation panels, if you remember, to earlier videos. So I'm now just going to go around the car and apply it. <coughs> Hopefully, 
without making too much of a mess of everything. You get the idea. Right, that's on there. How good does that look? I mean, when you consider that, what, in November, when I got this, none of that was there. We had a big hole up here. That was missing. Uh, done a bit on that bit as well. You can see sort of the texture. You can't see that that was ever weld repaired. So that's really good. You can't hardly see the join in that wheel well. You wouldn't know that that was not original unless you watch my videos back or you were a bit of a spotter. Same with that seam there, that all looks original. Um, what else have we got? I did the um, towing eyes just so that they look nice and even and black. In here, again, you can see that join up there, but otherwise you wouldn't know that, and, and that one of course, but who cares, it's all hidden behind the underbelly panel. Done the rad mounts. Um, I've done, you know, everything the same on that side as well. And then up, I don't know what I can get there. Under the front here, all of that's done as well. Um, actually, well, I've just spotted a bit of mist. Just up in there. I've only got the dregs of the paint left, but hopefully it's enough. Just to shoot that bit black. Right, that bit is now black. All in there, up in there. And then, sorry, just accidentally cut the video off. But yeah, done in there as well. So, that's good. That's another thing ticked off the list. It means that when it rains tomorrow, I'm not getting pissed off that the, um, Jotun's going off without anything being over the top of it. So I've made a big mess. I don't think too much of it is on the ground, but I'm going to clean up and go home now. I'll probably get a kebab again, second night running.